More on Traniacs. I don't know if you've seen, but we are coaching John Clark. He is former UK's strongest man to a crazy feat. Crazy. Stuff's nuts. His goal is to run 48 marathons in 48 days in all 48 counties in the UK. And this is coming from being like a massive, massive muscular guy. Now I've done a couple marathon swims of 27 and 41, I don't even remember, 37, 27 and 31, 39, a lot of kilometers. And people always ask, why would you do that? And the answer that we always gave was like, have a sense of adventure, go on an endurance adventure. And that's all what this is about. So when John asked me to coach him, I was super psyched up. And what we're gonna do today is after six weeks of him training, we're gonna share a full coaching call as far as how to start thinking about doing something crazy. But whatever it is, if it's a crazy idea that involves huge amounts of endurance, more power to you. Here's how you can start thinking about it. How are you feeling, man? Yeah, I'm good. It's feeling feeling really strong. Like everything's coming together really nicely. Like the the short runs are feeling. I almost feel guilty at the end of them. I feel like I've not actually done anything. And then the longer runs are now. Like today was uh, ended up being nearly 16k. And again, like no tiredness, no soreness, no. I, I feel like I'm not working hard enough. If that makes sense, which is exactly I suppose where we want to be. Yeah. Um, not not overreaching, but also hitting the sweet spot with the heart rate element. So um, so yeah, no, I'm feeling really good. The um, the glute for the most part is is fine. Yeah. Um, I'm getting treatment on that every couple of weeks just to keep an eye on it. But now everything moving in the right direction. Any so I've asked you this a whole bunch of times. No niggles whatsoever in lower limbs. That's the big thing that we gotta be cautious of because you're such a big dude. Um, making sure that like from the top of the knee down doesn't hurt at all. You got nothing? Yeah, no, pretty much good. The only time my, so the knee that forced me to retire from strongman, the patella tendon occasionally gives me a little bit of soreness, but that's only if I'm out on the trails. I think that's that instability and more uh, sharper hills rather than just rolling hills on pavement. Um, but I'm working with my physiotherapist on that and he's giving me some stuff to just focusing on prevention rather than cure, just trying yeah. to keep it at bay to make sure we're spending that as as we're going. But he's I showed him the training program and he agrees that the the heavy strength work and things like that that we're doing are, are just gonna bulletproof that need as much as we possibly can given the the injury history with it. Yeah. yeah, he said that there's no, there's nothing there to worry about as long as we just manage and maintain load the way that we are at the minute and just slowly increase rather than going straight in at multi-day marathons on week seven. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who came up with that idea. <laughs> um, if you do any lower leg work, like um, just what I'm, I'm thinking about is there's studies out there that are showing that like half the individuals who do an ultra marathon which is kind of what you're doing even though it's way less each day uh put together it's basically an ultra marathon so that's how we've got to train something like half the participants in a an ultra marathon event had lower leg injuries so we gotta beef that up if you do things on a stability ball or uh, like the the foam blocks that people will do single leg stuff on is that harder on your patella or does that help uh, that helps a lot of the single a lot of the patella stuff that we're doing is kind of like isometric um holds and using the the elevation boards and whatnot anyway okay um so yeah so now that that's all coming across coming along nicely there's no there's no weakness between either leg when I'm doing single limb work. And aside from my deadlifts and squats, pretty much the rest of my lower body training is single limb, um, hamstring, calf, um, posterior chain focus rather than anything kind of bodybuilding and um, okay. strength, traditional strength, shall we okay. say. Okay, yeah. So, yeah I'm, very, I'm getting very upset that my quads are starting to disappear, but... <laughs> It's one of those things. Yeah, you're going to waste away. Well, in that same study, it said that 
having a lower body mass helps reduce the likelihood of injury and do better in ultra marathons. So you might get a little, yeah. little smaller. Well, at this rate, my calves are going to be bigger than my quads, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you're already doing that, um, I'll probably start writing in. We've got, um, I don't know what day it is, but I wanted to have the core workout, the foundation workout, um, and then the heavy strength in there right now. What I'll probably leave in is the heavy strength, because that's really good, really key right up until a couple of months out before the race when training load is really high. Um, but I'll probably start easing off of the foundation and the core workout and doing core work with a little bit more instability as well. So whatever you end up doing with your PT to, to do that, just uh, if it's single leg work, if you can swap out a set or two with a foam instability uh, mat, like the the things that are like this, that yeah, yeah. you might see me on Instagram with the kettlebells. It's just good to get that leg, that lower leg shaking, and and uh, get all those little muscles nice and stable, and get the, yeah. the big thing is like that, make, making sure that the toes are. All right, yeah, the, the pro, that's a lot of it. The proprioception of the of the toes and the feet, and um, that'll be a big thing. Like, uh, I can't remember if this is a study or I think it was just a physiotherapist that said it was something like toe, big toe strength is really correlated with avoiding injury. I'll start working on that big toe. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just barefoot work. That's all. Yeah, just doing work yeah. barefoot. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, all of that stuff we can add in. No problem at all at my end. Yeah, yeah. You got all the, the stuff for it. Um, so otherwise, like, how's uh, how's the the motivation? Fill me in. Um, it, it's good. It, the reality of the challenge is obviously as we get closer and closer and closer the reality of it does obviously start to come more in focus but um i never went into it with any kind of disrespect for the distance i always respect the distance the challenge and never thought it was going to be a walk in the park by any stretch but uh but our motivation is high and i think with it being so close i mean 20 weeks doesn't sound like a lot but as we know i mean we're already six weeks in aren't we so um so yeah, no motivation is really high. Like not missing a session, not cutting anything short, getting everything done, focusing on sleep quality and all the other little intangibles that all add up over time. So yeah, no motivation's good. Accountability's there, and just ticking every session off one at a time. Okay, that's that's good. When you start noticing, if at all, that motivation starts to feel like a grind, which kind of might start creeping in. From the sounds of things, even if you're like, you know what, I feel good, but um, like if your eyes starting to wander at wanting to do a race or a challenge in between now and the 20 weeks, that's kind of a little indication that we might want to keep an eye on that. Like motivation is sort of the first thing that starts going. It's like your brain is trying to almost govern you from doing too much. So. Yeah. I think Keep my, me posted the competitive on competitive nature of me likes something in in the foreground. Yeah. And although twenty weeks like is still a long time away, it's just that temptation to behave. Like I um I noticed that my Iron Man entry for Iron Man UK is still active and they haven't deferred it yet for next year. Yeah. So already I was thinking that's two days before the forty eight, forty eight, forty eight is due to start. So already I was like, Oh, I wonder if I could kick this off with an Iron Man. But I was like, no, that's a silly idea. Stop. Yeah, I stop, would be stop, uh, stop closing this laptop here. <laughs> Sorry, John, I'm out. <laughs> I was like, stop making something already difficult even worse. So, um, so now, yeah, the, the, the laser focus is purely on, on the 48. I think we've got that 46-mile trail run um, in May. But I think for me, the reason I really want to do that is not to see where I'm at physically, but just that mental toughness i think 
I think we've spoken about it before, like that mental resilience comes from practice and to go from not having done an endurance event since November to then July the following year, I think having that something in the middle ground just to remind myself of the graft of putting one foot in front of the other when fatigued, tired and uh, ready to pack it in, I think will be good as a as a kind of like a midpoint in the in the process. So, but now aside from that, I'll behave and not start wondering and thinking about other challenges. Well, let, let's take a look and see. I want to see here. We've got 20 weeks, but then we've got that we had. Where is it? At the end uh, or middle of April, which is three weeks before the Malvern Hills 46 mile. I was going to build you up to a like a big block of three days in a row. So that is like two months away. Would you like to have something as a stepping stone in between now and two months from now? Have something like a mini challenge that we're building up to four weeks from now? Have a little bit of a rest and then build up to that uh that thing at the beginning the middle of april have a bit of a rest do malvern so it's chunking it up into three and four week chunks does that help you mentally yeah i think so i think having that so i like bruce saying on message yesterday things like training feeds showing us that we are slowly improving but the the pace remains the same it just feels a little bit easier and that's harder to quantify Mm -hmm. kind of thing so if we had something every four to six weeks where I can look back and go, well, actually, that's a huge step forward or more progress. Because my concern is that, not that I'll start to panic that I'm not where I should be, but we yeah. don't really have um, markers that we're trying to hit, so mm-hmm. to speak. Obviously, we've got distance and in, incremental increase in distance and time over the course of each training week, but... It's just knowing something that we can then physically compare from four weeks previous to say, well, actually, there's been yep. improvement and, and everything else from there. And I think, as you say, like and like I was saying earlier, I think because I'm competitive nature, I think having that, something to really attack every four weeks as well yep. is, is definitely going to help in keeping that uh, mental resilience high and stopping the mind wandering into other stupid stuff until next year. Yeah, we can build that in. It gives us some markers for a couple of things. Yeah, number one, how does it how does it feel mentally? Um, like, does it even if if it feels like time is going by quicker? If a three hour run feels like a one hour run used to? Like, I, I want to get you to the point where I put a three hour run on the calendar, and you're like, oh, just a three hour run. Fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm- the good thing about today is like today was an hour and 50 I think it was and um, like previously like last year I'd have been looking at that thinking about oh I've got to hydrate make sure I get my nutrition right and, and prepare for it don't get me wrong I'm still preparing for it but it's I could just put my trainers on and away we go now it's not an event it's yeah. just a couple of hour run so yeah it's good. to run a half marathon right now it's not something if you said pre trains on and go do a half now cool and that's after the two hours we did this morning. So I'm definitely getting to that point where I'm still respecting the distance, but it doesn't feel like anything that's intimidating in terms of as a one-off, obviously doing it 48 consecutive times. But yeah, um, but yeah there's definitely that mental resilience. I mean, Monday to Friday, I'm running on my own anyway, so there's that extra challenge in terms of just getting the hours done and the grass done in the rain, the wind, and the, the, the terrible weather we have in granted not as bad as yours um and then those weekend longer runs are definitely getting easier as a result um so yeah no that um there's definitely an improvement in that aspect when does the weather start getting nice there well it's uk so like never yeah it's the uk so uh <laughs> august for <maybe> two days <laughs> okay and then we'll go back to normal so now we'll, we'll start to see the the days are getting longer um daylight hours are increasing um which helps so now when i'm getting out early morning or later on in the evening it's still light which helps um but yeah the weather will start to turn march april where it will be less waterproofs and hats and more vests and shorts so although they're still few and far between given the uk's horrendous weather okay but now i'm quite fortunate i've got a couple of friends that um 
they're pretty fit to be able to run those distances off the bat with me. So those weekend runs are getting done nice and easy, nice and quickly, without any drama, problems, or or issue. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that answers that. Weather is never great, so it's not like I've got to save big volume for any time because we'll just assume that it'll be largely the same until the race yeah i think it's, it's character building anyway isn't it if you're getting out and running in the rain and wind then come the summer months summer months by the uk standard then a yeah. good two three hour run should be an enjoyable thing rather than a that takes you an hour before you can regain feeling in your hands and feet but uh, yeah okay i want to just kind of quantify how far the fitness has come along um because I know you were looking at Strava and Training Peaks, uh, or Strava and Garmin, and it felt like it hadn't come along too, too far. Um, so we'll go from right at the start. Fitness was 52. Let's see if I can do a calculator here. Past or present 52. I feel like, feel like we need a drum roll. <laughs> and, well, it... <laughs> It really doesn't matter. You're increasing, and that's all I really care about. And it's been six weeks. So the growth rate per week has been 5.8%. And that's including a little bit of downtime because one of them was a half week. Uh, like the very first week that I'm starting from was a half week and there was a rest week in there and we're really just starting out had I and and in addition to that we're also not counting any of your strength work as having a TSS score because you're just doing them and not marking them off and like you have to manually kind of guess at a TSS score but if you were to add in the strength work add in the PT and uh, actually guess at even just putting in a TSS score of 20 or 25 for those sessions, you're probably right at a growth rate of 8% on the jump up. So we're pretty much right where we are. I also went a little bit easier at the start to wrap our head around how resilient are you. Um, I ended up having one build that I did a couple of years ago where I started a build and who I was working with started me out at like a 10 or 11% increase week by week. And within three weeks I was destroyed and it took three weeks to come back from that. Um, and it like, it, not just three weeks to come back from that, but three weeks of actually losing fitness during that time. So I wanted to go at it kind of gently and then build in, we'll build intensity into it as we know how much you can handle. Yeah, that makes sense. Because we can't, given, I mean, well, it, 26 weeks total is what you had. Um, we can't afford an injury anywhere in there. Yeah. Because um, that's going to be the one thing that'll derail you, maybe from even getting to the start line. So, I wanted to be yeah. gentle at the start and then ease into pushing you. Yeah, I said that to quite a few people that I think just getting to the start line without an injury is going to be a, a major step forward. Mm. I think the amount of training load and volume that we'll go through over the next 20 weeks to, to get that, to get all the way through without a niggle or something we're worried about or something we have to manage across the course of the 48 weeks, I think that's going to be. A minor miracle within itself. Um, so yeah, no, I'm completely on board with the slowly, slowly, rather than go all in and get an injury and then lose six weeks and and so on and so forth. But turning it back, question to you: Are you mm -hmm. happy with everything at your end? Am I doing everything that you want me to? Is there anything you want me to focus on differently? Or only thing that I would request is if you're doing the strength sessions, mark them off as complete, just so I know. Otherwise. I think it's good. Are you entering all of your HRV data into that spreadsheet? Uh, now I've got the HRV uh, data, I do need to enter it. So yeah, I'm, I'm okay. keeping an eye on it and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll get to the end of the week and then upload the last week ready for the next week of programming. 
Okay. Um, if that's okay with you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I'm on it. I ended up getting a whoop band purely because mm. I just kept forgetting, getting out of bed and completely forgetting to get one first thing in the morning. Um, so now I've got no excuses. Now I actually have it there in front of me. So yeah, I'll get that updated and then you've got that as well. Okay. Yeah, that's the only thing. Um, just so I can, I know everything that's going on because we have these chats, you know, once a week over text and like, how are you feeling? Are there any niggles? But if I can get that full picture of did you do the strength session and that helps me understand like a 5.8% increase is actually more like a 7% increase because there's additional strength sessions, that'll help. And getting ahead of any, any injuries, illnesses that you can't yet see coming up, HRV is good for that. It, I find that it's three, four days ahead of what you actually feel. So um, having that is good. And I like Whoop and I like Aura and I like HRV for training. But what they tend to do is they give you a, here's your HRV today and here's your recovery today. And it like, as you've probably seen, it's all over the map. Your HRV from one day to the next is wild. So it's hard to make decisions off of it. But if you can take a seven day rolling average, then it gives you a trend. Like that's a true reflection of what your body is going through. For example, you could be firing on all cylinders, having great training, super fit, feeling good, have two glasses of wine, and then the next day your heart rate variability is in the tank. That doesn't mean that you should change up your entire training plan because of those two glasses of wine. But if we use a trend, those two glasses of wine aren't going to make as big a difference. Yeah, yeah. No, I noticed that yesterday. My recovery yesterday was 95%, and then today it was apparently 15%, because <laughs> I had um, well, I had two two beers and a pint of cider last night. Yeah. So, again, for me, that that's literally not even a problem, but obviously it elevated my heart rate enough to create a 15% recovery, apparently. So, yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, as you say, I mean that's the way I viewed it. It was like, well, the seven-day average is we're in a good spot, so no, no red flags, and off we go. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I'll, I'll get, I'll get that updated, and then we've got that rolling trend to look at as well. Okay. Yeah, and the the rolling trend is good because what it does is it compares your thirty-day average with your seven-day average, so it's basically comparing you to you as opposed to you to um, the variation of you over the last seven days. So it's taking the last 30 days as a, like here's your general level of fitness over 30 days, and here's acute, acutely what you're going through right now. Um, and that that helps. Um, so we'll go with that. No, but otherwise, like keep going. Big thing to, to get through right now is just holding back with a little bit of a grind of building up that aerobic base before we can start giving you things that feel like work. That said, if it's feeling like work multiple times throughout a week, we're probably going too hard. This should feel fairly boring, but I'll try to sauce it up a little bit with a, a challenge every month or so. Yeah, everything, like saying, everything's just ticking along perfectly. There's no, no issues, nothing really that's particularly difficult other than obviously the interval sessions where you put in a little bit more effort rather than just kind of like zone two work. But, you know, I'm really happy with how it's going. Um, and, again, happy that I'm this far in without any niggles or issues as well. So, so, yeah, it's all good. Awesome. The challenge that we'll do in four weeks will be not a single day kind of thing. What you're doing in your challenge is a multiple day thing. So I'm going to do it as a multiple day thing. The challenges that we do outside of the set races are going to be multiple day like all right set aside some time on your calendar and i'll put it in right now let me know if we need to move it if there's i don't know a wedding or there's no events right now really around the world but if there's something that time we're going to pick three days really have a big bump up and see how it feels yeah sounds good yeah if you just let me know what what kind of date you're looking at and i can make sure those days are free in the diary Okay. Uh, for me to I'm going to put it, as if it were. I'll put it in Training Peaks right now yeah, as something perfect. to work for. So you can have a look yeah. and see if we need to move it around. Yep, yeah, perfect. 
Awesome. Okay. Good stuff. I'm going to get doing this. This is way more fun when I don't actually have to go and do the work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's way more fun just opening training peaks and doing whatever's there rather than having to think about it. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, thank you for your help so far. So, there we go, Trainiacs. It's not a whole lot of exact information that you need in general, whether it's a marathon swim, whether it is a marathon, like an ultra, ultra marathon or multiple days in a row, or you're going to do something like we had somebody that was working on Team Trainiac that did five Ironmans, uh, five half Ironmans in five days. Shout out to Dr. Tommy Martin. And there's not a whole lot of like secret sauce. Essentially, if you're doing a big thing like this, you have to do a lot of training. And there's no like, what is the best session? What is the best training plan? You just have to really get used to being active all the time. But a couple of the things that make a big difference are how much can you increase week by week? And then that idea of first increase the aerobic base and then build intensity into it and while you're doing the entire thing, make sure that you're staying strong and injury free so that you can increase. So in general, do a lot of stuff, stay strong while you're doing it, ease into the difficulty, don't just go crazy right from day one and you'll be able to do some crazy endurance adventures that you never expected that you can do. 48 marathons in 48 days, that's brutal. All right, Trainiacs, if you aren't already subscribed and you want to follow along to my journey, which right now my endurance adventure is trying to get my FTP to 300 watts, or John's endurance adventure, which is the 48, 48, 48, hit the subscribe button below. Later.